Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. This morning we are going to record a session with the Skinas teacher about persuasive writing. Bismillah. Alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam So we need to meet some outcomes in persuasive writing. And shall I just outline my project? Yes, please. Go ahead. Okay. So we're meeting the, out the general outcomes of exploring thoughts, feelings, and ideas. We're comprehending and responding personally to and critically to text. We're managing ideas. We're enhancing clarity in our industry of communication. And we're supporting collaborating and respecting our work with others through our writing. Specifically in persuasive writing, we need to be able to clarify and extend ideas. We're combining ideas, extending understanding and using prior knowledge. All the things that go along with clarifying and extending and then using textual cues. Now, we need to take a position, we need to support that position and then present it and then summarize it in our writing. The project that I'm expecting to do is to have two positions in the class. We have some money that was, was raised. We're going to use it either for the food bank or to, or to dig a well in Sudan. How are we going to decide about that? So the students are going to write a piece to explain why they're taking this position and what's their evidence or how are they supporting their position? And then we'll make our decision. That's that's the idea. What do you think? That's a good idea. It's, uh, so how would you teach it from the Quranic perspective? Like from the Quranic worldview, you said you will have a noble, noble cause or like what's the Quranic perspective? Well, definitely we're helping others. We are, we're, it's, it's a good deed every, every, Every intention, we're known by our intentions. So we're doing, we're making our intention to do something good. And then we're going to proceed. We've got, we've collected the money and it's all just money that we've got from different places. So it's the... Uh, okay, my question one more time is, yeah. I, I understand the outcomes required and the procedure as well, that this is a good project. So let's begin uh, to... Uh, to put it through the filters. So we have these 10 principles, uh, we can use those foundational principles. The first thing is that, uh, first thing to teach, I guess, would be to ask students to examine the position they are taking. Are they themselves convinced about it? So that would be the, are they honest? Uh, are they supporting the truth? Uh, any, both, both sides have to have to have that position examined first of all, within themselves. So that would be the, when we make the intention, we make the intention to support Lama Arin al-Hakka. The Prophet ﷺ told us that uh, the dua is to, O oh Allah, show us the truth as truth and grant us the ability to follow it and show us the falsehood as falsehood and grant us the ability to avoid it. So let's talk about it in a sense that we are not dealing specifically for this, this project. We want to teach our our children, how to critically develop a framework that they can use for any project, okay. any position in future. Otherwise, uh, we are just giving them the fish and they are just arguing something local, small, but we, we need to teach them how to develop that framework. So the first thing in that framework is, is the position I have taken a true position? In this case, both you know, uh, there can be a gray area, but normally this is the procedure, we number one. Number two, when we are pursuing others, the Prophet said in one case, when a dispute came to him and people started to argue, he told them, look, I know some of you may have more persuasion, more, more powers to persuade me to make a decision, even though they know themselves that it's not right, but they are pursuing me to do, like if it's a dispute of money or land or a tree or a well, 
I may make a decision in your favor because you have persuaded me. <laughs> okay. But so on the day of Kiyama, I am not going to be responsible for the decision because you persuaded me and I made the decision on the basis of your persuasion. <laughs> See that, well, yeah. and both of these scenarios, there, both of them are are good, aren't they? Like, what's wrong with neither, neither of them are a problem? So the whole point is the persuasiveness of it. That that's where the the students right, have to right. excel. In in this case, it's not black and white. It's not you know hak and batil. But what I'm suggesting, while teaching this unit from the Quranic worldview, instead of just limiting yourself to this small one thing, teach them the ability to use the framework to any future persuasion that they want to do. So number one, before you set off, examine your own position within yourself. Am I really uh, fully convinced that this is the position? Number two, uh, teach them the tools. Now, that's where I think the most important aspect of this whole exercise is going to be. Instead of instead of uh, any, what what is it that the students are going to convince, what are the tools they're going to use? Number one, does logic help? What, like what, what are they going to support? How are they going to support their arguments? What do you think? In this particular case, for example, the ones, the students who say we should send money to, to Sudan, what would be the argument? Well, they would certainly say, Everybody needs water to drink, and if people in Sudan that 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 don't have any water, of course they need water. So we're 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 supplying something that's necessary to sustain life. So definitely, that's a good thing to support. Right. So at that point, if I would be the teacher and I am listening to this debate, I would say, so you're you are making a priority like you are saying let's put this argue this particular yeah. issue through the lens of what is most urgent like what is what is better than the other both are good feeding the local yes. putting the food food in putting food in the local it's both they're both good so your argument is that there is a hierarchy of needs is that right <laughs> Definitely, yes. And water, you need water before you need food. However, I can just see as, as in my own mind, why aren't we meeting the needs of, of water in this country? Why do we have to send it to Africa? We should just make sure that all the reserves in Alberta have clean water. So the so, other side is going to come up with a different yes. hierarchy, different priority, different order of priority, right? Yes. Now they both have the same position. We are teaching them to use, okay, first of all, do they agree on the principle itself that we need to prioritize? We need to have some logical objective standard of uh, spending this money. First of all, that, that part, right? So that takes yes. us to the first principles. Yes. Meaning they both agree on the hierarchy, but they disagree where the higher need is, and how are they going to dis how are you going to convince them? How are you, how are you going to pers persuade the other side that the local needs have higher priority than somewhere far away? And then also all the just the logistics of it. Hmm. If we we lose control if we send something, where is Africa in a child's mind? Right. In an adult's mind, if we just send it away, there's no more real, real, we're not in touch with the reality for them. It's just an idea after that. Okay. So we are teaching them to uh, bring in geographical distance as a factor in persuasion. Is that, is that the idea? That's one thing, yes. Like Africa is out there, but this uh, reservoir, or we don't have reservoirs anymore. We, like this need, yes. local need is, local need is more urgent because this is within our reach. Is that the, is that the persuasion that the other side is, is doing? Yes, what, what's happened now is we're not even talking about food bank anymore. We're talking about water here in Canada. So we've added another layer of, of, of debate here. Okay, here is the, here is the next step then. 
do we have any example in the Islamic tradition of persuasive writing? And let's just examine what tools have been used. That would give us a model, right? We can just use that model all the time if we have authentic framework for persuasion, for doing persuasive writing. But let before I do that, uh, let me give you one other example, for instance. You remember the last days of Socrates? This is a beautiful example of persuasive writing. La this, there's a book called The Last Days of Socrates. He has been uh, sentenced to drink poison. He's going to die. And the day before, or a few hours before, his friends come to him. Remember that part? It's so beautiful. They try to persuade him to escape the prison. They try to, they say everything, all the, all the uh, arrangements have been made. All you have to do is say yes, and you will be saved. This is such a wonderful piece of persuasive writing in, our, in, in the Greek tradition. And uh, what Socrates says that, in response to that, he refuses, as we all know, he drank the poison and he died. So here is an example we can use as a model uh, because he convinced them. And then in the end of this dialogue, all of his friends who came to persuade him were persuaded that his position is right, even though that meant drinking the poison and dying. Isn't that a beautiful example to use? Like in one, it is, but but who knows that example? Do you well, think no, that do you think no. all of us in Sakina's teachers know these? Well, things? now you know it, I and mean, it's okay. just you know, learning takes only one. But I want to go back to the Quran, <laughs> okay? So, the okay. most any ex, any the most important piece of text of persuasive writing that we have, like the model par excellence is the Quran itself. We all read the Quran, right? But do we know that this is this became, when the Quran came, that became the standard for everything. It wasn't poetry, it wasn't prose, but the use of Arabic in it and the, and the, and the strength of it became the model. So uh, in our tradition, we take the Quran to be the model par excellence. So I'm just going to take one simple example of uh, uh, how Allah persuades the entirety of humankind and what tools he's using to do that. So we know that the Quranic worldview consists of three things. Number one, Tawheed, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one, there is only one God. Number two, Risala, the prophethood. And the third is the Ma'ad, the return, the resurrection. Surah Qaf begins by this letter Qaf, well, Quran in Majid. So the first three ayahs deal with two of the foundational principles of the Quranic worldview. Number one, they say, Bal ajibu anjahum munzuru minhum. They are in doubt, they wonder that somebody from themselves have come to warn them. And they say, this is, this is ajib. This is very strange. How can a human being uh, be in this position. So they deny the Risala, they res deny the messengerhood. Number two, they say, Aiza mitna wa kunna turaban dhalika rajumbaid. This person is telling us that we, when we have died and we have crumbled, to, our bones have crumbled, we have become dust, we are going to be resurrected. What a strange thing to do. What a strange thing to see. So the position of the of the denier of the resurrection and the risala, two of the three principles are right here. Let's see how Allah SWT tries to convince them. Would, would that not be a model that we can apply all the time? 
Like, well, yes. If if can you can you show us how that works? Because yes. if we read the read the surah with eyes like that, then maybe it will become clearer. Then we have some tools. Okay. Let's look at the arguments that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala presents. Uh, in this case, it's going to be number one. First of all, it's black and white. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala immediately says. It's not that that you people are in doubt of uh, resurrection. The reality is that truth came to you and you became doubtful. You denied the truth. You denied the truth and everything then goes back to this denial. Now, here are the examples, one after the other. The first example makes the case of resurrection uh, outside the immediate. So they have denied, right? They have they say, well, what you are saying, we don't even believe in what you are saying. We don't even believe that you are a messenger. Look at the methodology Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is using. If he were to say, no, no, believe that I am a messenger, what I am saying is truth, right? It would be unending. It will never convince anybody, there is no persuasion. But without yielding an iota of the truth, which is, you say, no, what has come to you is in fact truth. But let's set that aside. Here is the first example. Afalam yanzuru ila samai fawkam kaifa banainaha wa zayyanaha wa malaha min fruj. Have they not seen above them the sky, the heavens, the sama? How we made it? And how we beautified it, and mamalaha min fruj, and there is no defect in it. Now the argument is that I am not going to argue with you whether the messenger is true or not. You have eyes; just look at the sky. How did we, like, we made it, and we beautified it? You see the stars every night, and you see no defect in it. Now look at the earth. Well, earth. We extended the earth, we set mountains upon it, and we take out all kinds of zaujim bahij. This is so beautiful. Zaujim bahij, beautiful pears, beautiful crops. This in itself is tabsira. This is something for anyone who wants to uh, who wants to be convinced. But set it aside. But nazzalna min al-samai ma'un mubarakun. Hamat nabihi jannatin wa habli hasid. Don't you see that we send down water from the sama, and you use, use that water to for vegetation and all kinds of fruit. And look at the. Date palms. When nakhla basikatin laha talun nadid riz kalli li baadi wa yeina bihi baldata maitata maitan kazali kal khuruj. The earth was dead. We sent down water and all this vegetation grew. Baldatan maita. We resurrected the earth. Kazali kal khuruj. And this is how your resurrection is going to be. Look at the argument. Observable facts, nobody can deny. The earth was barren, dead, without the rain. Now it has come to life. You see the argument? So the argument is essentially use your own eyes. Like what? Look, take, a, take a look, open up, become aware. And then it could be, the tool is essentially observable facts and you can just, Pile them on layer after layer. This is all, these are all the facts that you can see. Undeniable, undeniable. So undeniable. The, the force of the argument is that you see it yourself. Right? Okay. You see, number one. Now, the next section of the surah takes history. Allah SWT says, <laughs> Now, Allah says, look at the past. 
that you know, look at the history of people of Nuh alayhi salam, of Ashab ras of Samud, of Ad, of Firaun, like nation after nation after nation. Look what happened to them when they denied. So second layer of argument is presented through historical rootedness. This is common human history. Everybody knows these nations denied resurrection and they were destroyed. There is a built-in warning in it. Don't deny resurrection because you are going to be resurrected anyways because the earth, we, we resurrect it, we bring it back to life. So we have the power to do that. But if you deny it, look what happened to the... But the next argument is even just, yani, look at the, the force of it. This third argument brings the case right into their own being. We created insan, we created the human being, and we know every single passing thought that goes through his nerves. And because because there are two recording angels on the left and the right. The argument is that everything we do, everything we say is being recorded and there is not a single word that comes out of our mouth that is not being recorded. Now, if you say, if you say that there is no resurrection, again, the argument is, uh, the case is about resurrection. Then what are you going to, going to do? Be, because even your denial is being recorded. And on the day when all of this record is going to be presented to you, you would say, because there are, there are witnesses, you will say, لَقَدْ كُنْتَ فِي غَفْلَةِ مِنْ هَذَا فَقَشَفْنَا عَنْكَ غِتَاءَكَ فَبَسْرُكَ الْيَوْمَ حَدِيدٍ Oh, all of this was hidden from me. And now my eyes have opened. And now I see it. And then the surah goes on to give us the case of those man rahmana bil kalbi munib those who believe in these three fundamentals they would be entering the yawmul khulud the everlasting day in peace like they will they will have this jannah prepared for them so the argument here Number one, it begins by pointing to observable facts. Number two, it takes the case right into their own being. And it points to the reality of accountability in the hereafter for what we do in this dunya. And uh, it points to the everlasting bliss for those who say, yes, this is going to happen, we are going to be resurrected. I mean, the, the denial, the, the, the persuasion here is number one, logical. Look at the sky, somebody created it, the, the one who created it, beautified it, day after day, night after night, there is a cycle, there is order, there is system. He has the ability and the power to recreate everything because he created it in the first place. Number two, uh, number two is the historical evidence. Everybody knows a bit of history. What happened to those people who denied resurrection before, before those who are listening to the Quran when it came? And number three, number three is the power of persuasion based on self-examination. So the framework that we are constructing here can be applied, number one, there is something in the human being, every human being called 
receptivity to observable facts. Like if I say, draw two parallel lines, they will never meet no matter how long we extend it. This is the power of geometrical proof. Now, no side arguing would ever be able to say, no, no, they are going to meet if you extend them to, to, to Jeddah. If you go that far, they will meet. No one is going to do that. So this means we are teaching students to construct objective arguments, self-evident proofs for their position. Framework, right? It can be it can be applied to any any kind of writing persuasion. Number two, this objective observable reality is then superimposed onto the very personal aspect of what we are saying. So if I were you, I would actually get a jar, put my own dollar into it, ask students to put in their whatever number of cents they want to put in, make a real case of having a real amount of money sitting on the, on the table and make it authentic in the sense of, uh, like this is not just theoretical anymore. This money is either going to go to Islamic relief for a well in Sudan or going to go to IFSA for food bank, but the students are going to now have an experiential reality of doing something real, authentic. So Skina Circle advertises itself to be community oriented, like service oriented, not community, service oriented. Look at this. We can just do this deed in the classroom, teach them how to do persuasive writing, use the Quran itself as, as persuasion, and now we know that even uh, like these uh, Socrates, that's such a powerful example because one of the, all the arguments that Socrates gives on that day, he's giving them at the expense of dying. And one of the arguments is so beautiful. He says, look, you are asking my friends, you are asking, and, and the gentleness of this, I, I heard the word respect in your uh, description. The gentleness of Socrates uh, argument, he says, my friends, my friends, like every time he calls them my friends, my friends, you are trying to convince me that I should live longer because my words are have wisdom. And my if I extend my life, I would be, it would be more beneficial. You're you're telling me I, I respect your love, I really appreciate your love. But look, do you do you really think that I'm going to die anyways? Like I'm so old now. And if I escape, as you are telling me to escape, how long do you think I'm going to live? Now, the ones who have heard me say whatever I have said, whatever, and his humility is so beautiful. He says, whatever little I have to say, whatever little I know, do you think I can add anything to that by escaping tonight and extending my life to another few years? Because, you know, and number three, we all know old age brings its own problems with it. Wouldn't it be better I leave now rather than you have to take care of me? Like all of these are arguments that nobody can deny. Obviously a well in Sudan or a food bank in, in the city is not of that proportion. But what I'm suggesting is that in Skinner Circle, we open eyes, we open windows, we open, you know, we go deeper than what the framework of uh, Alberta Program of Studies is asking us by uh, by constructing not to teach not to give them fish but how teach them how to fish. Is that does that make sense? Well, certainly. When you step back and say, "Well, persuasive writing is all about marketing," and I can I can convince you you need to buy this stuff and and do do these kinds of things for your entertainment. Like this is it's very much a consumer orientation. It's all about 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 just getting people to do things that they don't really need to do. This is taking it to a different level. Now we're talking to hearts. We are talking to to what really matters. <laughs> and so if if we if you can show us more about how to keep on looking at these these three things are so exquisite, undeniable observation, the historical. And this is where I had one question: is the accountability? that comes with historical evidence. Is that something that we can work on some more? Like you, you used that word, you know, common human history, and yes. people are all, all accountable for their deeds within that history. 
Right, right. So the Risala, like the, we have the three foundational principles which make up the Quranic worldview. The first is yes. Tawheed, the second is Risala, and the third is the Maad, the return. The second part is actually so powerful a tool to teach history and social studies because, excuse me, the Quranic concept of history, all of it is the human response to the invitation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to come to him. The whole history of humankind from the beginning to the end is actually uh, a response to that invitation. People reject and people accept. Now, those who accept, you know, they have other struggles as well. Nobody is free of struggles, but that's the human condition. But those who reject, they say there is no God, there is this whole thing just started by itself, or they have more than one God. Like the Greeks have God for almost everything imaginable you know, the God of inspiration, the God of poetry, the God of, God of love, uh, any, all these. Uh, uh, and the Quraysh, like every culture, every people have, we don't have those apparent gods anymore, but we have hidden gods, like people have hidden gods. Uh, they are not so apparent. So when you say uh, persuasion is done for marketing, for buying this product or that product, this is all true. This is how the market economy is. You are just bombarded every day. But in, uh, in the Skina circle, if we are teaching our students, our children, to develop foundational level tools as we meet the outcomes. So from this, just one example, what have we done? We have brought the Quran itself, like everybody reads this, uh, read Surah Kaf is, is recommended, like I think even in the, the morning assembly or in their Quran learning, Surah Kaf is it's such a short surah. Can we not have this kind of uh, application of what we already know? So it's just a switch. It's very simple. We know this, right? We know, we, but now we can see layers of persuasion in the Quran itself. SubhanAllah, yes. I, I was also thinking right now that what is our definition of success? And so like if you're marketing, your success is if you if you get everybody to buy, like then you then you win your persuasive argument. So that's how that's how I'm gonna be the best because I've I've succeeded in convincing you. But this is the definition of like success that takes us to the nether realm and to our celestial home essentially. So that's that's the journey here. My, my question now is, is it too difficult? Like you already know costs, you already know this worldview, you already have this. It's a question of applying, and first of all, seeing the levels of arguments to convince others, right? Yes. So there is, there is the ob uh, observational, objective, external reality, look at the sky, look at the earth, look at the stars, look at the defect lack of defect in anything we have created so that, that part which is you no know, in the quran but in also in logic one thing is just that we we whatever has survived in human civilizations for example these two parallel lines never meet like nobody's going to be able to deny that right so let's just close this by saying number one we have made it more real. There's actual money to be sent. So there is a sense of joy in helping wherever this money goes. Right? Yes. We have done yes. a good deed in the class, just in the, in the process of teaching persuasive writing. In fact, we have collected $2, whatever amount, amount doesn't matter. We have, we have taught um, service orientation in the classroom, just teaching apparently teaching a piece of writing. We have incorporated one of the three uh, important aspects of Sina's circle into the teaching of this unit. Number two, uh, we have brought critical thinking through the Quranic worldview, like number one, objective writing, number two, historical evidence, and number three, I didn't mention the word psychological. You see, if you examine the 
question of persuasion, ultimately it's a psychological uh, is it's a state of uh, like when you are convinced, how I, how how is anyone convinced or persuaded? It's a psychological surrender or acceptance, either by coercion or by willingness. So it's the is the coalition of the of the willing, <laughs> right? Okay. Yes. So, so because now you have become convinced that the other side is saying send the money to to, to Sudan. You have adopted psychologically, you have adopted their position. You are convinced now that this is better for this money to go to Sudan or the other way around, whichever way the argument goes. In this case, it's not so critical, but it can be critical in, in other cases. So the idea is to teach them, but we need to know what is it that is going to be the final straw that will tilt the balance. And that is where in this surah, when it was pointed out in the ayah that look at these two recording angels. They are recording every single word you are saying. And we are close to you than your Hubble Vareed, Vareed yani your jugular vein, which is a poor translation of Hubble Vareed, but nevertheless, the proximity, these are operating at the psychological level. And this can be used or abused as is abused as what you are pointing out in the marketing because all they are doing if you look at all the advertisement all these like for mattresses and food and all of these things what are they doing if you buy this your life will be so happy like your sleep will be so good the taste of the chocolate is so good all of this is psychological at the level of psyche at the human psychology so they use these but the model that is in the Quran is real. This is not theoretical. So I think we can close it here. Uh, so we have the historical evidence, objective reality, and the most persuasive part is how would you like? How would you teach this to this in this particular case? If I were the one in the in the classroom and uh, uh, using this argument. What evidence can I bring? I would just download this parched earth and these uh, empty fields in, in the Sudan and say, look at these pictures. I'll bring graphic evidence to support my argument. So we add another element of presenting uh, do, doing the persuasive writing by adding real life images because images impact psychology, psychological makeup of, of, of our beings, right? Words are just words. We are just listening to words. But when the eyes see something, that's why they say a picture is worth whatever is worth. Is that not any one of the ways of persuading? So yes. let's just close. So what's the decision? Is the money going to to the food bank or to Sudan? Let's see who's got the, the, the greater power of persuasion here. Right. In both cases, in this case, you know, it's, it's noble. In both cases, it's noble. But if uh, if there is another example at some other time, inshallah, we can discuss that. Alhamdulillah. Are there any other questions? Alhamdulillah. I, th I think this example of using this one surah is wonderful. And... The Quran must be full of so many more that we don't even know about. So this is where we need to open our eyes. Surah Yasin, we recite it every day. It's all full of the same persuasion of saying there is resurrection. So if we look at the Quran, like look at the Quranic worldview of these three fundamentals, we can find evidence after evidence in every place about how Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pursuing gently and sometimes not so gently. Because you know this this is serious matter. In in you know in this particular case, it's not that serious. It's not life and death situation. But the, what what we learn from the from applying this these principles, number one, are we convinced of the truth of our position? Because there is power in truth. There is just 
truth has its own power, period. Like Socrates was right. Had he escaped that night, would anyone ever give him any respect? Like he was right. He was being killed without any justification. He, he had committed no crime. But he chose what he chose and his name has stayed. So, um, yes, inshallah, you know, we can find other examples in other cases as well. But so this is just one, 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 uh, one uh, small, tiny little bit piece of uh, uh, teaching that we are doing. Writing itself is, uh, is much broader, what we write. There are other categories of writing. Inshallah, we can apply these principles. But first of all, let's see how this goes. Jazakallah. Jazakallah. Okay. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam.